On this week's Silver Screen Report, we're in the stadium for Senior Field Day at the Columbia Convention Center for Palm and here in the Media Center for the Recent Works Art Show. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, May 4th, and your Silver Screen Report starts now. The annual Senior Field Day gives seniors an opportunity to enjoy each other's company on the day before prom. Solomon Dix has the story. Seniors say they enjoy Senior Field Day as it brings everybody together. Senior Field Day is honestly, um, kind of hasn't been super explained to us, but you know, it's a bunch of activities just kind of get everyone together. It's like a last kind of communal event for, um, for all the seniors. It's just a really good way to spend time with your peers before we all leave and go our own ways in June. I think it's a good day for you to get with the rest of your class and all your friends that are on the same level as you and have a day to actually hang out instead of just skipping school and going somewhere and actually be with your fellow students and your friends. Senior Field Day offered many games and equipment to enjoy during the seniors day off from academics. At Senior Field Day you're supposed to have a really fun time, you know, play bubble ball, have some drive through um, food trucks come in, uh, just have fun with your friends. It's a great way to just relax at the end of the year and just kind of get together with a bunch of people, maybe some people you've never really spent much time with outside of school. And there's bubble ball and eating and spending time with friends and your peers before we all leave high school, which I think is pretty cool. Seniors share their opinions on how to improve Senior Field Day. Maybe have different like little sports sections or something. Be a little bit more information about like the process of like going to Senior Field Day and what will be entailed. This has been Solomon Dix with your Silver Screen Report. With the end of the school year right around the corner, seniors celebrate their college admissions while looking forward to the next chapter in their lives. Here's India Wright with more. Stress, hard work, and dedication are just the tip of the iceberg during your high school journey. But once you reach your destination, all your struggles will have been worth it. I definitely do think it's worth it. If I could go back, I would probably choose a route that had less stress in it. Because you, in high school, you can make a lot of decisions that can help you in life. Anything uh, involving hard work and you know that there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel, I think anything is worth it. Especially when you, uh, you, know, you, have a, you have a plan for yourself and you, you're acting on it. I think the stress eventually will be worth it. It's kind of hard to see that now, but graduation's coming up really close, and I think once we actually get there and walk up on the stage, we'll realize that it was worth it. The senior college celebration elicits a lot of gratitude from the seniors. It's indescribable, really. I, I, I'm appreciative of it. You know, it's, it's showing that uh, we have adults out there who actually care about um, you know students and their. Uh, their well-being after the high school endeavors. It's absolutely awesome. Like, I didn't realize that I was really going to college until I stepped in there and I had my flag <laughs> that said my college on it. I was just, it was just amazing to me. It made me feel special. Seniors are confident and looking forward into the next chapter of their lives from the start. I'm, I'm confident in myself, uh, my parents. They know that I'm, I'm going to do well in whatever. So, you know, I. I just have confidence in myself and all of my peers graduating with me. I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. I won't be going very far from home, so that's comforting. It's going to be an amazing thing for me. I feel like that's where I'm going to start becoming great, where what I'm good at will start to show. I'll definitely make my mark where I'm going, and I know it's going to be challenging, but it's going to be all worth it. This has been India Wright with your Silver Screen Report. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students about their college plans. I'm going to Alabama University because that's where every, all my family grew up to. And I just want to go there because I see all the fundraisers and everything they're doing. I want to go to the Clemson University because I've heard that it's one of the best school college in South Carolina and I want to stay in South Carolina so the tuition fee wouldn't be like too high for my parents and for me to pay off. Um, I don't really plan on going to college. I'm trying to join the military, probably the Air Force. 
Bye. I'm going to Lander University. Um, I am actually a fine arts major right now, but I'm actually going to become an English major. They have a very extensive study abroad program, so they allow most of their English majors to go study at their Winchester campus, which is actually a 20 minute train ride outside of London. So I, I'm the type of person I want to travel. So if that's offered to me through learning and through getting an education, that's the kind of opportunities that I want to take and they offer that. Saturday night, juniors and seniors dance the night away at prom. Max Franks was there. Prom is a significant event for most high schools in America, and it is considered important for a variety of reasons to both students and staff. Prom is important because it's an event that pretty much every school has each year, and it involves a lot of uh, preparation with getting formal clothing and, and tuxedos and dresses, and it involves families and grandparents, and a lot of plans go into a prom. Prom is the night of all nights. It's supposed to be the most important night of your high school career. And so I, I'm just out here trying to make it as best as it can be, really. Prom is important because, you know, you get to be out with your friends and just, you know, just see a different side of people like when you're not at school. Because, like, you know, just some say you did in high school, you know, look back with your children, you know, just to create memories. Prom is different for every group of upperclassmen both in theme and in the people. Every prom's different. Every theme's different. I try to get the kids to actually think about something new, think about something that they want to represent them. And they usually pull it off very well. You get to see people in their happiest time. And so I suggest everybody gets a prom and everybody tries to make the night as best as possible because you're not gonna get this night again. It's, it's really once, maybe twice in a lifetime. This has been Max Franks with your Silver Screen Report. The annual Recent Works Art Show is on display here in the library through today. Last Thursday night, artists, their teachers, and their parents gathered together to celebrate this year's chosen pieces. Here's Todd Whittington with the highlights. The art show serves as an important time to show off works from all art students. The art show is an annual opportunity that the department has to show off what students have been making all year long. So um, anything two-dimensional, three-dimensional, big projects that kids have been making, they get to really show off what they're capable of. People come in and look at the artwork that students have worked very hard on throughout the year and it gets, gives them a time to show off what their, the hard work and talent that they have to their family, friends, and classmates. Students can overview the works at the show, looking back on their style and how they have developed as artists. I have two pieces in the art show, and one of them, actually both of them, were for my uh, breath pieces in Studio Concentration. Both are like my favorite pieces that I've done for the entire year, and I'm really proud of having them like in the show. It's just wonderful to see their style develop and a, a signature look that's just there, so it's really gratifying to watch them grow. Benefits of an art class are innumerable, including the development of creative skills and paving the way to potentially being a professional artist. It allows them to express themselves creatively and to refine different skills that they may not get in other classes and just to broaden their horizons about how they express themselves. It's really important to get a popular opinion, like to get a critique from a bigger audience. It relaxes you and it gets away stress and it's just a fun thing to do and if you're good at it, it could be a career choice. Every year the library keeps one piece from the show. This year's piece was Alyssa Ross's Surrealism. This has been Todd Whittington with your Silver Screen Report. Last Thursday, Spring Hill High School teamed up with Freeway Music to host their first music festival to honor the students who passed away within the last year. Bailey Hunter was there. Honoring students who have passed away is always a somber and important matter. On April 26th, Spring Hill High School did this by putting on a school music festival bringing students together in memory of four members of the Spring Hill community who passed away. It's important us, for us to celebrate life, and that's what this is about. Uh, it's honoring four of our students who have passed, um, and just gathering all of us together as a Spring Hill family and giving us a chance to uh, be together, share their spirit, and um, recognize the great things that they've done. The music festival really brought you know, it brought a lot of kids together, especially a lot of kids who were grieving and, you know, had a, a whole lot to deal with that kids shouldn't really have to deal with like that. And so it, it, it brought everyone together and that's always a good thing, especially for healing and sharing the music and ideas. That's also 
obviously a big part of it. I mean, you know, what's the point in being at school if you're not sharing ideas and learning from each other? So much talent in one place. Uh, it was really great, like seeing everybody get together for this special event. And, uh, you know, it really means a lot to the families. The festival was successful, prompting those involved to be hopeful about a possible return next year. I definitely want to do another one because you get to li listen to it. I mean, it's great. It's cool. It's free. It's to celebrate and to be together. You know, it's a good, safe place. We get to look at each other's talents and um, just be with each other. It was a great time. Um, it was a great opportunity for our band. And even though the students that are at the school next year might not be the same students that dealt with the loss that happened this year and the last year. They, um, you know, everyone experiences loss and so it's good for everyone to be able to have that opportunity to come together over it. I think they should do it every year. They should make it like a, a yearly celebration uh, just for music and for, you know, the people who have died. This has been Bailey Hunter with your Silver Screen Report. The SAT word of the week is pathos, a noun meaning an emotion of sympathy. Tame Impala's most recent album, Currents, released in 2015, is his most unique release yet. It was awarded Best Rock Album, Album of the Year, and nominated for Best Alternative Music Album, too. Here's a look. Released on June 17, 2015, Tame Impala's most recent album, Currents, is a standout from his previous albums, Lonerism, released in 2012, and Inner Speaker, his first album, released in 2010. One of the different aspects of this album is Kevin Parker's use of synthesizers instead of a focus on the use of guitar like in his previous two albums. Unlike anything he's released before, Currents is an album that captures the pain of dealing with heartbreak as well as the struggle with moving on and accepting change. The album opens with the song Let It Happen, which is about letting nature take its course, accepting that not everything is going to be in your control. After this, Currents forms a story about the ups and downs of life. Currents does not have a beginning, middle, and end kind of plot to it, but Kevin Parker tells stories within each song that form a cohesive whole, representing that life does not necessarily have a beginning, middle, or end. The songs, eventually in past life, stand out the most in Currents as they represent the feeling of heartbreak elicited throughout the album as well as the struggle to accept change. Eventually is about the ending of a relationship with the priority of oneself in mind over the partner, while the past life follows this with strong feelings of confusion, nostalgia, and heartbreak. Kevin Parker demonstrates that ending relationship is hard for both sides in his song Disciples, which ends with, There's so much I want to tell you, so much I want to tell you. There are other songs on the album like Nangs and Gossip that allow the listener to fade out from the previous emotion elicited in the album and serve as a kind of interlude. Parker ends Currents with the song New Person Same Old Mistakes with the simple notion that people change and that self-doubt is natural. Parker demonstrates that life is transitional and there's no question that Currents does a spectacular job of showing just that. And now for some announcements. Tonight is your last chance to see the Spring Dance Concert. The show begins at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. Tickets are $5 for students and free for faculty and staff. Dazzler trials are next Monday through Thursday at 4 p.m. in the cafeteria. You must attend all four days. See Jenny Haynes for more information. The orchestra presents its spring concert next Thursday at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. Now here's Mio with more. Thanks, Maddie. Please donate your empty book bags to the homeless. Beta Club will have collection boxes placed throughout the school. See Beta Club sponsor Kelly Payne for more information. All outstanding lunch debts must be paid before next Friday. You can no longer charge to your lunch account. Parking pass signups continue today during all lunches. In order to sign up for a parking pass, all debts must have been paid before May 2nd. If you haven't purchased a yearbook yet, go to jostensyearbook.com to reserve your copy. There are only 82 yearbooks left, so hurry and reserve your copy now. Yearbook distribution will be Tuesday, May 22nd from 5 until 7 p.m. We will have more details about distribution next week. Thanks for watching. May the 4th be with you.